Good day everyone. After going over the previous guide a little more carefully, I realized there were a few finer points of tanking that deserved clarification. These concerns were also raised by the community, so I decided to extend the previous guide to help address some of them. So, let's pick some fresh material to work with. And, uh, look, we have done this already. Alright then. The first thing I'd like to go over is aggro management. In the case of Trash, it's efficient to use abilities such as Flash for Paladins, Overpower for Warriors or Unleash for Dark Knights to quickly generate threat while wrangling up enemies. Once all mobs have been tagged, it's time to choose a suitable location to stack them in and let the rest of the party have their fun. On occasion, you might run into ranged enemies. These will not follow you into melee range and will often interfere with proper positioning. The solution, however, is simple. We drag the other enemies on top of it. While ranged attackers may not follow you closely, the other enemies will. At this point, be sure to pop a cooldown to help mitigate the incoming damage, and weave additional aggro abilities to ensure the enemies remain locked onto you. Lastly, if you notice a specific enemy dropping in health faster than the others, that means your damage dealers are focusing it. Be sure to tap target to it and use a single target combo to prevent losing aggro. If it's lost, simply use Provoke and follow it up with Shield Lob, Tomahawk or Unmend to pull it back. And keep an eye on the enemy list to track your aggro across multiple enemies. Which finally brings us to what I like to call the full stop rule. Once you have finished wrangling up enemies and come to a stop, it's important to remain in that spot until all targets have been eliminated. There are two reasons for this. First and foremost, it allows friendly ground AoEs such as Shadow Flare, Doton, Earthly Star or Asylum to work to their full effect. These abilities are difficult to reposition, so moving out of them once they have been placed is undesirable and should be prevented in most cases. And secondly, Eliminating all targets will drop the party out of combat, allowing players to regenerate their mana and TP between pulls, and keep their resources topped off throughout the dungeon. Now let's have a closer look at how to manage aggro on bosses. Unlike the strategy employed for trash mobs, building aggro on bosses should come primarily from single target combos, unless additional enemies are involved. We initiate the encounter with a ranged aggro action, such as Shield Lob for Paladins, and follow it up with an aggro combo while weaving in your other actions. Doing this will generate a healthy amount of initial threat on the boss, allowing you to use damage combos from that point onward. Once you have obtained better gear and are acquainted with its mechanics, you can also try switching to your damage stance at this point. But keep in mind that switching stances will sacrifice your survivability and potentially overburden your healer, so be sure to compensate for it with efficient cooldown usage. Regardless of the stance you're in, it's important to always keep an eye on your aggro meter to ensure the other party members are not too close to stealing the boss's attention. In closing, pushing your boundaries is something I highly encourage to help improve your abilities as a player, but it's also important to work in tandem with the rest of the party. As the leader and protector of the group, you are responsible for seeing them safely through the duty first and foremost, and only once you can guarantee that should you start adding cherries onto the cake. <laughs>